with the changes, you will not have to re-enroll your student. They are enrolled in our school. If you'll stop by the office at any point, you can call or email, and I can give you a portal ID. It's case sensitive. There'll be uppercase, lowercase letters, as well as numbers. That you will log into Gradebook. So you go to lcardisd.org. At the there's a top bar. It has options. Click on students. Under student, and it has Gradebook. When Gradebook comes up, you create an account. Unless you already have an account made, if you have older children, and you look at their grades and attendance. From there, you'll enter the children's, I believe, birth date as well as the portal ID, and you can do it. It'll be one account for however many children you have, so it's not multiple accounts. It will be grades once they get to the point of having, like, number grades. The letter grades will be there, but the number grades is what you'll, when you use the first grade, that's what you'll be watching closely. But you'll also have attendance. So you can see every time I enter a parent note, if there's a missing parent note, if it was a doctor's note, unexcused, because attendance goes for anyone enrolled in our ISD, no matter if they're 3 or 18. <coughs> Once they enroll in the ISD, they fall under the uh, truancy law. So with that, we have in our handbook, page 8 and 9, it has tardies as well as absences. You can find it there, but with Gradebook, you'll always have access to how many days my child was absent. When they were absent, if they came in late, you'll be able to track their tardies because at six tardies, they get an attention. Once they get to kindergarten, the tardies, you get the first six, you get an attention, but your next six, you get a Saturday school. Whereas pre-K, they only do detentions for every six tardies. Through Parent Portal, there will be a packet. Since you're already enrolled in the ISD, you will not have to do the new student packet. So once we start posting about kinder, pre-K and kindergarten roundups, you won't do anything. Once we post about the new uh, update for our returning students, that's the packet you will do. So you don't have to do anything on May 4th unless you're enrolling a student that's not currently enrolled. But if you have any trouble, you can just call me at the office and I will walk you through it. We're learning together. It's not like zip slip. It's not going to ask you. It's not going to erase everything. It's in our main system, so whoever you put in there for a contact, whatever order you put it in, that's the order we call in. So if you put yourself, but then you skip down and don't put your spouse or whoever else is in the household, on the, if you put them on the bottom, we will call everyone else until we get to that one because we go in numerical order. So just make sure that's always updated. You can update phone numbers and addresses at any point throughout the year. It's not something that you have to only do at the beginning of the school year. So if you had a phone number change, you go in whenever you had that change and update it and then we have the updated information automatically. Is there any questions about that?